you pick back over your shoulder so you've got some momentum when the swing's in. Yes. Swing in, and right here you flick your wrist. Almost think of throwing the axe into the ice. In. And just as you get to the ice, you flick the wrist. Notice the, the angle of the arm doesn't change, just the wrist has the motion. The front points and crampons are made to dig in with the heel down. See how the heel is lower than the toe? The reason is, you know, first of all, the way the, the tool is made and fouled on the point. Secondly, if you, as you pull the heel up, see how the toe is hitting the ice? If I continue pulling the heel up, it shears the front point right out. So if you have your heel up when you kick, your toe hits the ice and not the cramp on. And you're going to have to work awfully hard to get a good placement. Whereas if the heel's down, you kick, and it usually digs right in. You can stand, literally standing, I've got 90% of my weight on that foot. So, uh, and it's not kick and move the heel down, it's heel down, you don't even have to look at your feet. If you keep the heel down, you just kick. I've picked out a spot where I'm going to throw the axe. I see a little divot right here. You always want to look for some imperfection in the ice to throw your tool at because you have a better chance of getting a good stick. So I've seen the spot where I'm going to move it right here. I pull the axe out and throw them. Now, it wasn't as good as I'd hoped, but I've made a start, and then with another swing, I've got a good set. So, it's important to practice hitting the same spot two, three, four times in a row. So you see always look down just like rock climbing and look for a good place to put the points. You're not only kicking the point in, but you might have a little uh, extra depth to get the foot in. Right here is a little bit of a divot. So that would be a good place to put the, the foot. Up here is a great shelf. So you could kick in here, the front point would be in the ice and the side points on the front of your foot will be resting on the shelf. There's another great shelf. So, just like rock climbing, use your feet.
got a lot of features on this ice here. And the little steps that your front points go on. So as we're moving up, you're looking down almost as much as you're looking up to put those feet. You can only see one side here. There are two techniques. One, I want to show you. One is how to get an, an ice axe that's stuck in the ice out. And the other one, since I have this chopped up a little bit, uh, how to hook and pick instead of swinging the axe, which uh, sometimes can be advantageous, particularly for a second who's trying to get up a climb as quickly as possible with as little energy as possible. So first, getting the axe out when it's stuck. We have a good saw placement. We move up. And we've got to get the ice axe out and it's stuck. It won't come out. Instead of hanging onto the handle, fighting and moving and fighting, you take your hand up to the wrist, uh, to the top and you just bump it. It makes it come loose, but don't pull it out. Just leave it hanging there once it's loose. Then grab the handle. And use your technique again of spotting where you're going to set the tool, pull it out and swing. Nice. So, since I've been up here a number of times, there are a lot of holes. So, you can just set a tool in the hole, test it. It's always good to test your holes. And the same thing, you don't pull this tool out. When you look around for something, you keep it there and you see something that you can look at. Okay, that's pretty good. So I see something up there. There again, I'm going to leave the pick in the ice so I'm ready to go. Go up to me. Feels pretty good. To be more efficient, we don't want to pull the axe out and have it flailing, flailing around in the air and then find a place, okay, we'll put it there, and then you touch it and then put the axe in. What we want to do is start with the axe here, decide where you're going to put the axe before you pull it out, and pull it out, and in. One smooth motion. That does two things. It uses a lot less energy and it makes it a lot safer. You're not spending three or four seconds with one axe in the ice. The ice is very brittle and fickle, so you always want two axes in as much as possible.
We have a little patch of ice here. I think we can demonstrate some front pointing and French technique with the crampons. First, I'll go up this steeper part, front pointing, and then on the upper part, we'll do some French technique before you step flat footed and how you use the crampons on ice, on flat ice. The steeper ice, you set your front points into the ice. A nice firm kick. You have your axe on the uphill side for balance. And you just keep moving your axe up. Kick, kick. Move your axe up. Kick, kick. Now that we're on top, we still have obviously need crampons, but now we're into French technique. The crampons are flat on the ice. Now this ice is level enough we can just walk right up. If we're steeper, you may go into front pointing or you can turn your feet sideways. The important thing to remember is the crampons work with all ten points on the ice. As soon as I put this crampon in and if I try to edge with it, there's a very good chance it could break out. So they're very secure. If you try edging, the correct method is always have your foot flat. Coming down, same way. All the points on the ice. Ice like this, you can walk right down by setting all the points. Another way would be to turn sideways, or one foot is, you know, like so. Let's, as long as you keep all the points on the ice, you can go right down. If you're going down ice that's steep, too steep to use French technique and keep the feet flat, there again, you front point. Just reverse it coming up. You turn around, face the ice. Use your axe for balance. Okay, we're going to demonstrate some more front pointing and French technique, or German and French technique. And we're going to do a combination of the two. And the reason you might do that is your feet get very tired doing these very quickly. So this way one foot is doing one motion, another foot the other motion, and you can switch them off as you're going up. So, you start up, you put this foot in the French technique, left is front pointing, flat footed, front pointing, flat footed, front pointing that's rolled over on the ankle gets tired very quickly. And the front pointing gets tired in your calf, so you can switch off so that you're not burning one foot out all the time. This little ice slope that we just demonstrated the crampon technique on, I want to make one more comment about that. This ice is, is hard, fairly smooth. If you were to fall on this ice, you will most likely not be able to self-arrest. So anytime on a glacier with ice like this, any type of slope that has hard ice, you must put running anchors between the people on the rope team. Because once again, if you fall, self-belay will not work. Let's look at the quality of this little piece of ice. You can see there's a little bit of a dividing line here. This is thinner. You can see some air behind these outside sickles. Here you don't see that. And you know, in general, this is good quality ice. The temperature is good. The it's filled in between the, the ice sickles, which would be the chandeliering part, to make it a good solid piece of ice. I feel very secure on this ice. This ice used to look 
like this over here. Can you get that, Leslie? Icicles hanging, and you might run into ice that is just a series of icicles welded together here and there where you can get placements. But over time, as more water runs down, those all get welded together into one solid piece of ice like this. We'll demonstrate two different movements going up the ice. The first is the stagger step, and the second is the frog hang. Yep. We're going to do a demonstration on how to go from vertical ice to horizontal ice. One of the more difficult uh, things for especially for beginners to do. A couple things before we start. If you look at the top of a bulge, it's flat. And what happens because it's flat, when the ice starts forming, there's water flowing, it freezes over the rock, you have some nice ice, but then you get some snow and you might get a layer of two, three, four inches of snow. But then more ice forms on top of the snow. So what you can have is ice, snow, ice, snow. So you put your pick in something that seems like a perfectly good placement and it all shears away. So because of that, there's a couple things I practice on bulges. One, I will not put my picks side by side like that. Because if the ice shears away, both picks are going to go. I keep them separated. I'll have one pick here and one pick over there. So if you get something that shears away, you don't lose both axes. Uh, well, the other thing I do many times, I don't put both picks up on top. The ice right at the crest of the bulge is usually in very good shape. So I'll put a pick there and keep it there. So because the way the ice can shear off, a lot of times I'll keep a pick low and I actually set the pick, make sure it's set solidly, and then I'll palm off that pick when I'm going over the bulge. We're going to demonstrate both ways. And, uh, so First we'll do it with both picks up over the bulge. So I have one pick up there. It feels pretty solid. I've tested it. And I'm going to put the other pick away from that one. So if you, Ice is layered and shears off. I don't lose both pulls. You walk your feet up slowly, keeping your heels down, and you just continue walking. Now, at this point, you may want to put a pick a little higher to give you more leverage, and continue over the bulge. Okay, a second method is as you're coming up over the bulge, set a pole securely near the edge. And then start going up again, keeping your heels down, palm off this tool. And then when you get to this point, you can leverage off this. It's a couple advantages. I think it's less strenuous and you don't risk the chance of this layered ice shearing off and letting you fall down. I normally don't like doing that. There's no sense in teaching bad habits because this is something I see so many beginners doing. What you're gonna, what I'm gonna demonstrate is 
getting the kicks way over the bulge too far. Over so far that you can't see your feet, you can't tell what they're doing. It makes it extremely difficult. A lot of people will take a pick way back there. There's two things. You gotta come up, bring your heels up to get the pick that back that far. Now I cannot see my feet, even if I lean back, I can't see my feet. So I'm just guessing where my feet are going. It's much more strenuous. And if you if the only thing you can do is keep your heel down and kick and hope and hope for the best. It doesn't work very well. So don't get yourself so stretched over that you can't see your feet. I've actually seen people in this position kicking around and thank God they're on top rope. You still rolling? Yeah. Okay. One other thing while we're at the bulge, I want to point out. The swing is essentially the same, but slightly different. Because you're swinging your tool. If you're going on a vertical wall, you stop here and you flick the wrist just a little bit. If you're coming down the ice, there's a much bigger, more pronounced flick of the wrist to get that tool to angle into the horizontal ice. So start the same, back over the shoulder, down, and a really strong flick just as it gets close to the ice. Okay, we're tired. Let's rest on the tools. First thing we're going to do is show how to use a Fifi hook. Unfortunately, I forgot my Fifi hook, so you have to use your imagination. Basically, you set your tool, make sure it's pretty secure. You grab your Fifi hook, which you fasten to your harness ahead of time. Clip it into your end of your tool, and then you can sit on your tool. Hang on. Take a total and complete rest. Another method to take a rest, if you use the umbilical cord like I do, is to use the umbilical cord to hang off the tool. Take the cord, pick it up over the top of your tool. And then you can hang on it. Go. If you don't use umbilical cords, the other thing you can do is, I don't have a rope on me, but if you're out of rope, you can grab the rope, put it over your tool, and ask your belayer to take. And you can hang on the tool in the exact same method. We're going to demonstrate placing an ice screw. I'll climb up, place the screw, and critique it. Okay, my right tool is very secure. I can hang on it. I know it's not going to give out on me. My right foot is under my right tool to be taking as much weight as possible. The other thing I can do is bring this foot down and possibly have some weight on that, which actually helped. <clears throat> we want to place the screw somewhere between hip and shoulder normally, because it takes some power to 
get the threads to bite into the ice and if you try to go too high you don't have that power to start the screw. So this looks like a good spot. Unfortunately my tools in the way. There. To get the screw started I saw it back and forth get the teeth to start the bite. And once I get it in a little bit, I'll turn it in my hand. Or, the other thing you can do is lean in, hold it with your chin, and get another half bite. Now, let's notice the angle of the screw. This is almost horizontal. Uh, or angled up slightly, which is the preferred method for good solid ice. Angled up a little bit is good. For bad ice, marginal ice, I would have the screw angled down. Next thing we're going to watch for is, and feel for, is ice coming out of the end of the tube. You can tell a lot by how solid the ice is, by how hard the screw turns, and what's coming out of the end of the tube. It's giving me some good resistance. Here we got ice coming out. We have a nice steady stream of ice coming out, which means we haven't hit any air. Very good screw. I would trust that one with my life.